Welcome to the lecture that will discuss the variety of malignancies that occur in the female reproductive tract, breast, and the pelvis. As you can see by the ribbons, not much of the female anatomy related to childbearing and child rearing is spared when it comes to cancer. When you look at these women, what do they have in common? What makes them different? What puts any of them at risk for developing a malignancy? What? You can't tell? The only risk they have is their gender. No one is spared in terms of ethnicity, but some are spared because of lifestyle, reproductive history, and to some extent their age. The younger one is, the less likely to develop certain types of cancer when it comes to the reproductive tract. When learning about cancers in women, they can be differentiated by anatomy. Those within the pelvis and those outside of the pelvis. So within it, there is uterine, cervical, and ovarian cancer. Outside of the pelvis, we are concerned about breast cancer, vaginal, and vulvar cancer. We will discuss each type of cancer as lecture proceeds. What is the role of the nurse when providing women's health care? As you've heard over and over again, your biggest role is to provide education about preventive measures. This education should address the importance of annual well women examinations and what to be on alert for in terms of symptoms that something might be abnormal based on the patient's individual history. Educate women to practice healthy lifestyles. This includes nutrition, exercise, not smoking, smoking cessation, not using drugs, and limiting the use of alcohol. We have a variety of screening tests for women. Some are specific to a certain population, like the CA-125 and the BRCA testing for those with risk factors for ovarian or breast cancer. But universal testing is available for breast and cervical cancer screening in the form of pap smears and mammograms. Last but not least is teaching women how and when to perform self-breast examination. If a woman is diagnosed with some type of malignancy, the focus of education shifts towards explaining procedures the treatment plan, preoperative planning and preparation, as well as assisting them as they navigate the pathway to and through surgery, as well as to the oncology practice. Your education needs to address pain management, rehabilitation, side effects of therapy, follow-up care, and body image disturbance. Sometimes you may have to assist this patient in making all of the appointments required to get through this roadmap. For those of you concern, considering oncology as your specialty, here is a list of what your role includes. You need to review a patient's health history. Assess and monitor the patient's physical and, emotion and emotional status. Cancer is a tough diagnosis to have to deal with. Keep track of your patient's laboratory, pathology, and imaging studies. Communicate with the doctor and share the information with the patient. You will safely administer medications, fluids, and cancer treatments. Some of you may become chemotherapy certified so that you can actually administer the chemotherapy drugs. 
You need to collaborate with doctors and other clinicians about the treatment plan geared toward the individual patient. You need to help your patient understand the disease, the treatment plan, and possible side effects. Consider how long it is taking you to learn about cancer. We give you little snippets about cancer in every semester, yet you still forget what it is. Why do we have it? How do we treat this one? Is it going to be surgery? Is it going to be radiation? Is it going to be chemotherapy? What are the side effects of all of these treatments? So your patient is going to need to hear about it over and over. When you are standing side by side, the physician and the patient, you need to help them, the patient, translate what the physician is actually saying. We use very complex medical terminology, and they don't understand it. You need to be available to answer questions, and this will be in person as well as via telephone. Some practices have patients email questions, and it might be the nurse's role to answer some of them. Communicate with the doctors on the patient's behalf. This requires that you listen to what your patient is saying, feeling, desiring in terms of treatment, the side effects they might be experiencing, and the ability to continue treatments. Some of the treatments can be brutal, and just because they're going through treatments doesn't mean they're going to survive. At some point, this patient may decide enough is enough and would rather go on hospice care than continue through therapy. Help the patient plan for and manage symptoms throughout treatment and try and involve as much of their support network as possible in terms of family, their significant other, their friends, support groups, etc. So this ends part one. Move on to part two of malignancies of the reproductive tract.